Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to make a motion map. So there are a few requirements that I look for when I'm grading these things. Um, the first thing is a labeled number line. So what I mean by that is that a motion map consists of first a number line. Now the confusing thing here is the, the past week or so we've been talking about position time graphs and the t time has always been on the horizontal axis. Motion maps aren't really graphs, they're diagrams. Okay, so when I'm talking about a number line, what I mean is this thing here. And the position axis is basically your number line. Okay, so position in motion maps is a number line that's horizontal. And sometimes you may want to make it vertical, but we'll get, we'll get to those examples uh, when we get there. Um, next, we want to talk about dots. Okay, a dot just represents where an object is at a certain time. So on the motion map below, we can tell that at zero seconds, at the initial time, our object is at a position of zero meters. And we can also tell that at one second, the object is at two meters. Okay. The third requirement is velocity arrows, and I will also call them velocity vectors. Arrows and vectors in this class are pretty much synonyms of each other. Now, these represent how fast an object is going at a certain time. Okay, So the longer the velocity arrow is, it means that the faster it's going. Okay, Arrows are also convenient because they indicate direction. Okay, So arrows are a good way to note vector quantities because they tell you magnitude and how long arrows are and also direction with the arrowhead okay um, we've also got the initial position also labeled as zero seconds okay that's another important requirement that tells me where the object starts without it I can't tell anything about where it starts and finally, it's not on here, but label time intervals. Now, in honors physics, uh, it may be beneficial to use different time intervals. In this one, uh, it's not shown here, but a label time interval would mean, would tell you how much time has passed between each dot. So in the motion map below, you would write somewhere near the beginning that you're using time intervals of one second. Okay. All right, so let's give this one a try. A chimpanzee starts at the origin and moves forward at two meters per second for four seconds. Okay, uh, for this one, let's start with the first dot. It's at the origin. And you wanna tell me that this is where it starts at zero seconds. Okay, now, the problem takes place for four seconds, so I think an appropriate time interval would be delta t is one second, which means that between each dot, uh, one second is passed. So if it travels for two meters per second, how much, we're thinking about how many meters it has progressed forward, okay? Um, so two meters per second, for every one second, there's two meters, so it goes forward two meters. I'm going to place the second dot at two meters. Okay, so that's one second. And this is traveling at a constant velocity, so we can say that the next dot takes place here, the next dot takes place here, and the next dot takes place here. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. A four second motion map really does have. Uh, five dots, okay, because it has this, init this initial zero second dot. Final requirement is our velocity vectors. Throw those on there. Okay, now I know that these are drawings and they're diagrams, so in order to help me grade these, 
what's uh, best is for you to show me that it's these are all congruent to each other so what you should do if there are arrows that are equal is put these congruency marks to kind of emphasize that these arrows all represent a length of two meters per second all right so let's try another example so here we've got a water buffalo that starts at a position of seven meters and it walks backwards at three meters per second okay so let's place a dot at our initial position of seven meters so here we go seven meters and you want to indicate to me that this is where it starts so that's where it is at zero seconds and you know what if we have freedom here to choose our time interval okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say that each time interval represents two seconds this time okay so the question is if each time interval so if each space between each dot represents that two seconds has passed where do you think our next dot is so our next dot actually takes place at positive one meters okay so the reason is is that two seconds has passed okay so we want to think where is it going to be two seconds after our initial time well it travels backwards at three meters per second so if it starts at seven in one second it goes down to four meters and then a second later it's here at one meter okay so we will really think that you were really thinking that each time interval it means it travels back backwards six meters per second so the next dot actually goes here okay so then we need velocity arrows and these would get nice long arrows that one got kind of cut off but that's okay uh, you can show me with congruency marks that you meant that they're all equal lengths and we're done with that one all right one final example we have here a swan that starts at negative six meters and walks forward at one meter per second after 10 seconds it stops for two seconds and walks backwards at one meter per second okay now there's a lot of things going on here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually place this first dot and i'm going to choose a time interval of one second so that we're all nice and careful here so this first dot here you tell me it's zero seconds and you also choose a time interval of one second so between each dot only one second is passed okay so let's go we've got this one we've got um it travels forward at one meter sec per second and it does this for 10 seconds so let's go one second two seconds three seconds four seconds five seconds six seven eight nine and then that's the tenth second okay let's add our velocity arrows And uh, try to get in congruency marks, hopefully neater than I am. Now, um, I can give, I can take or leave an, ar an arrow here in the last dot, that's fine. Um, both would be considered correct. Uh, the interesting th thing here is that it's actually beginning a new type of motion because the problem is saying is that it stops for two seconds. Okay, so this dot can be considered as part of the first 10 seconds or the second piece. Okay, I'm going to say that I'm going to not put an arrow there because it's going to stop at um, a position of 4 meters, it looks like. 
okay? But I do need to indicate two seconds, okay? And we need to make sure that we represent those two seconds in a way that the dots don't overlap. Uh, the way to do this is to draw the dots on top of each other, so we're gonna stack them. So one second later, it's still at four meters, and a second later, we're still at four meters, okay? And after that, it walks backwards at one meter per second. So we're gonna put dots here. For every one second, there is one meter. And the problem doesn't say when to stop, so I'm just gonna stop here. Now, there's no arrows on my stack of dots. because it's at rest, right? So we don't want to put uh, velocity vectors on things that are at rest. And, but we do want to make sure that the final dots get velocity vectors, okay? So here's a motion map. Notice also I used uh, single congruency marks at the top as I did in the bottom. Uh, that's because they both represent one meter per second. So it's okay to say that um, those velocities are equal in length, okay? Uh, not in direction, though. All right, so hopefully this helps, and I'll see you in class.